In my previous video, I started with the wall panel which will cover most of the walls. Wall panels are quite uncommon in modern houses. This may be because it is expensive to hire someone to do them. So I thought I'd show a way to build a nice looking panel as cheaply as possible. If you think this looks good, keep watching because this is exactly what we're going to build. I use an AI voice for my videos because it makes everything easier. This channel is not about me. I'm just passing on knowledge. If you can't handle the voice, please turn on subtitles. As a carpenter, I like to build in a traditional way. In the past, everything was more alive and fun but now everything is flat and dead. Unfortunately, this has to do with cost as it is expensive to hire a carpenter. Which in turn leads to old methods being forgotten. Anyway, I intend to document as much as possible of what I can. I will show you how to build in the traditional way but with modern materials, and we will build furniture, stairs, kitchen and much more, so please join me, it will be fun. There are many ways to build a good looking wall panel, one of the more common in Sweden, is a simple standing panel, which we call pearl panel. With the right decor, I think this panel works well as an alternative to the more advanced. This video takes it up a notch, with more details, and an older look. When you make a panel like this, you can't take shortcuts by gluing moldings in different patterns, it won't turn out well. So how do you start? You must measure and plan so that all the compartments on the panel are approximately the same size. This is what can be difficult as all the walls are usually different lengths. We also have windows and doorways to think about. You have to make a decision depending on how the walls and windows are. You can either let the panel or the openings to decide the pattern. Let me explain. My rooms are small, so I let the panel decide the pattern, and all the openings and obstructions have to adapt. Which means, I get an even flow on all the panel compartments, and makes my OCD guests happy. If the rooms were bigger, and my windows were not so close to the wall next to it, I would let the windows decide, and everything else adapt, like this. I can't do this in my house, as the wall next to it is too close, and all the compartments would have different widths, which is not nice to the eye. So I chose to let the panel decide. If I let this window decide, the compartment on the left would have been wider, or very chaotic. The fact that I chose 30 centimeters or one foot between my compartments is no coincidence, but the measurement that fits best so that all the walls have a similar width on the compartments. If we take this hall as an example, I want all compartments to be similar in width, as it is the first room you see when you enter. I have chosen a classic pattern with two small compartments under a wider compartment. This is a more difficult pattern to choose as the measurements must be almost the same between the different walls. So how to calculate it? Choose a wall, where you can get your measurements edge to edge. The size can be between 25 to 35 centimeters per compartment. Preferably around 30 centimeters or 1 foot. This wall has a different measurement, so I won't be able to keep 30 centimeters between the compartments, but it doesn't matter, you can go about 4 centimeters in each direction without it showing. If I measure 30 centimeters or 1 foot between the compartments, I end up here. So I have to separate them so that all the compartments are the same width. As a carpenter, you do quite a lot of math and there are tricks and formulas for almost everything. To calculate the correct distance between the compartments on a wall, you can do this. Measure the distance between the two compartments on each side of the wall. Count the number of studs between the compartments. Measure the width of your studs, and multiply that by the number of studs. Subtract the sum from the total length between the compartments. Divide the sum by the number of compartments. The exact distance between the studs will be 339.8 mm. If you add the width of the stud to this measurement, you can use it as a CC or OC measurement, and the sum will then be 429.8 mm. If you look at the panel on the right, which has about 4 cm narrower compartments, you can hardly see it, especially later when everything is painted. 
As I mentioned earlier, the compartments can be approximately 5 cm different width in each direction, without it being visible. The upper compartment should be twice as wide, so you can just double the measurement. The opposite wall has a doorway and a window. We can use our standard measurement of 30 cm or 1 foot. As we can stop wherever we want at the doorway, without it looking wrong. So I start from left to right. If I had started from the right, the last compartment would have been wider or narrower, and it doesn't look good. So how do you build this type of panel? I can build in the background and explain during the work. Before I start with the panel, I have temporarily attached all the door and window moldings, including the window sill. The material I use is called MDF, consisting of very fine shavings, that highlight details very well. You can find MDF in most hardware stores. The thickness of the MDF board is 16 mm. I start by nailing and gluing a 24 cm wide MDF strip to the bottom. I have chosen the measurement so that my electrical sockets end up correctly. All of you who bought CAD drawings of the house, can see exact measurements. I will update your drawings as soon as I can, and you can log into your account and download new ones. I will update the drawings as I build the house. The reason I'm not going all the way down, is to save material. We're going to cover everything with a baseboard at the end. But before we glue or nail anything at all, the pieces must be prepared by milling a profile edge. I have hundreds of different router bits, but I only use one kind for the whole panel. It is the cheapest and most common profile cutter you can get hold of. A regular Roman Ogre cutter. But as soon as you have milled the edges, a problem occurs. It is not possible to join the pieces as they are. And you can't jack out the milling either. So how do you get a sharp edge between the pieces? I know three different ways to do it. One is expensive, one is difficult and one is easy. Let's start with the expensive. You can buy special router bits. To cut a reverse profile so you can put the pieces together. This is a good way but these router bits are expensive and hard to find. The second way is good but quite difficult as you have to be very precise. The milled edge is cut off at an angle, and the same is done with the piece to be joined. The last way is like the first, but without special tools, we simply cut the stud at a 45 degree angle. The ogre cutter we use is also 45 degrees, so they fit almost exactly. The small gap that occurs, can be filled with putty using a finger. After the panel is attached, I cover the compartments with 3 to 4 mm MDF. The board also covers the larger cracks, so I only need a little putty to cover the rest.
Above the panel I put a wide strip to mark an end. We mill it with the same cutter as the panel. Under the strip, I put a regular sealing molding for a nice transition. The panel must have a decorative strip, to break off the different sections. Molding is expensive, so I will make them myself. If you use the same ogre cutter as for the panel, and mill both sides of a 25mm or 1 inch strip, you will get a decor strip. Decor strip costs around 8 euro or US dollar per meter. I make them for free, and from scrap wood. If the molding is not against a wall or angle, I chamfer the edge slightly for a better finish. I also break the layers at the bottom before the baseboard. The baseboard is made of 12mm MDF, and milled with the same ogre cutter as everything else. I only attach it temporarily, as it has to be painted, and the floor has to go on first. When you join something decorative it should be done at an angle. The angle hides the joint better and has a larger area for glue. I think it looks nice with corner moldings. If you do such, you will probably have to extend your ceiling moldings somewhat. You want the corner moldings to end up before the ceiling molding starts, otherwise it looks strange. I do this by nailing a strip to the wall, to bring out the molding slightly. I attach everything temporarily as they will be painted later. 